Hello? Shalom? Morning. Merry Christmas to all of you. Welcome to Trinity Church. If you are a visitor, please fill out a visitor's card on the pew in front of you. We'd like to know who you are and we'd like to connect with you. We are here in the wonderful season of Christmas to celebrate many things. One of the things that we celebrate is our guest priest today the Reverend Darius Sudai, and we look forward to worshiping with him today. And also today is an important moment when we say farewell to our friend Wyatt Poe. Wyatt has been the music intern here for a year and a half. He arrived just in time for the lockdown <laughs> and became a very important person behind the scenes in preparing the Facebook broadcasts that we all participated in and doing all manner of special effects in the church throughout the week and on the weekends. He accompanied the choir, he played the hymns, he played the handbells, and it's appropriate that today as we start to bid him farewell, he is going to join Dr. Moon in the prelude by playing handbells on his final Sunday. We wish him all the very best in his future career, and we send him on his way with all of our best wishes. We have a little parting gift for Wyatt, and I think he would like to say a few words to you. Wyatt? Good morning. As Professor Golden said, I arrived right in time for the lockdown, um, and the congregation here in the, the parish has been so resilient and constantly cheerful and willing to support the music, and that has ministered to me personally. Um, learning all of the behind-the-scenes organization and administration of a music program like this has been an invaluable experience for me. and. I am absolutely privileged to have worked here with all of you and with the wonderful 
choirs and with Professor Golden. As he said, I've been here for a year and a half, but we had five years together prior to that. So I have certainly learned um, an uh, indescribable amount from him, and I will forever be grateful to him and to you all. So thank you very much.
for worship. Bless be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no sips are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. First reading, Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me in the garments of salvation. He's covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom, he decks himself with a garland, and as a bride, adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. <clears throat> the nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hands of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem, for he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has established peace on your borders. He sends out his command to the earth. 
He gives snow like wool. He scatters his hail like breadcrumbs. He sends forth his word and melts them. He declares his word to Jacob. He has not done so to any other nation. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who are under the law, so that we might be received adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a child, and a child, and also an inherit through God. The word of the Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, 
and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. The life was the light of all people. The light shines the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightened everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he who I say, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It's God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please see. I believe this is working. Everybody can hear me? Okay, in today's gospel, we read of the word, uh, the word we can flesh, speaking about Jesus, that he was before he came. And there's a lot of theology which goes around that. Now today, I thought we'll keep the theology aside and just speak about Jesus. Why? Because it's Christmas. And at this time, we need to can refresh our minds of why Christmas is important. Why is Jesus important to us and to people around us? Why? Why do we serve it? In today's gospel, it gives some of the reasons. There are many. Through Jesus Christ, we become children of God. Through Jesus Christ, we receive grace upon grace. There is lots of grace through Jesus Christ. And so out of that joy, we experience that grace, forgiveness, and love. And we call other people to come and share it too, because we have experienced it. And it's beautiful, and it's good news. There is truth through Jesus Christ, the truth that made a lot of people nervous and angry at the time when he was born. So we celebrate Christmas, we are joyful, we remember this because Jesus came in flesh, God incarnate, Emmanuel, God with us. He is with us everywhere. He is with us today here but I think sometimes we forget that because there are a lot of things going on around this world many bad things COVID for instance and sometimes we might be tempted to think that because of COVID or cancer or something else that maybe Jesus is, is not with us and some other personal challenges we go through, it makes us question, is God real? Is he really Emmanuel with us? 
And so at the time of this, we remind ourselves that he is, both in good times and bad times. The challenge comes to us when we forget that. Because when we forget, we forget also our place, that we are God's children. Around us, good things need to happen. They should happen. We are God's children. God is with us. The church has given some of us, priests, the privilege to be uh, with people when they are passing to the other life, when they die. And you can see that difference. At that time when somebody is passing on, Jesus is there. Jesus peace, Jesus love, and it's a beautiful thing to experience that with somebody, that Jesus, even at that time, most of the time it's difficult, but Jesus is there. And he's able to carry us through. This year, early this year, my father died of COVID. When he started getting sick, I prayed with hope that he, he get healed. And I prayed to God and said, I love to get one hug from dad before he comes to you. Can I get that? So I prayed and other people prayed with me. But one day before my dad passed, I made a video call. My dad was in Tanzania, I'm from Tanzania. And I saw my dad laying on a bed. I think most of you have seen people who have died of COVID. They go through, it's very painful. So I saw my dad there in pain. And that day, I changed my prayer. I said, God, if it's not your will to heal him, please take him. He's in, he's in such pain. So I, I prayed. Very far, he's in Tanzania, I'm here. And the next day, that passed. And when he passed, he called people to him and they said, my time is ready, I'm going. Even in that hard time, Jesus was there. I felt God's presence here, just as my dad felt it in Tanzania. God is asked every time to give us strength, to give us direction, to give us purpose. We need to remember that. This morning I gave an example, another example in today's, uh, in the nine o'clock, that a long time ago I was ministering to a girl who was troubled by evil powers. They exist, believe me or not. And I told them that I'm coming pray. When I reached her house, her name was Elizabeth, inside the room where she was, another girl came out running. I didn't think anything about it, went inside, and a few minutes later, people came and said, you need to go after the girl who just ran away. I was like, why? Why do you mean that? I have a ministry here. And they said, when she when she saw you, she said she saw fire around you. So that made me change my mindset. I said, okay, so I have fire around me? <laughs> Jesus is with us. Sometimes we don't realize that. But when that girl who had, had evil spirits, she said she saw fire around me, that gave me confidence to pray with authority, to know that, okay, God has got a purpose. I'm here, I'm doing this, I'm not alone. I was afraid going in, but then I was strengthened by what that girl with evil spirit said. She saw that in me. I didn't even realize that God is with me. 
And that has been true all my, in my ministry life. I've been a priest 15 years now. And every time when I go out, that is my prayer, that God, please remind me that you're with me. When I go to visit somebody, when I drive, when, everywhere. When we remember that, we are able to be this light. The gospel says that the light came into the world. We can become light to other people. When we remember who we are, we are God's children. God is with us. That is the truth. We're not being proud. We're not being arrogant. That is the truth. So when we visit somebody, when they are happy, when they are sad, when they are depressed, when they are sick, we are able to bring light, to say an encouraging word, to pray. We're not losing anything. Sometimes the answer is no. As I said, I pray that my dad get healed. God said no, his time is ready, he's, he's, he's here. So, but I pray and God hears. So today, in this Christmas, Jesus is alive. He is Emmanuel, God who is with us. We can go forth and be confident that we are with God. We are God's children. Merry Christmas. Let us stand on the farm of faith in the words of Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, and of heaven. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for all the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our bishop, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this town, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the aged and infirmed, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and ca captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord That we may live our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord In the communion of all saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Yes, if you agree with me uh, in prayer for Wyatt, uh, I was just seeing him up, I saw him ministering in another church, another Episcopal church, St. Nicholas at some point. So as he lives here and goes, wherever he goes, we pray that God's love and God's strength and God's hope, he, his love and strength and hope as he goes and ministers giving hope and love and strength to other people. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, merciful, accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, Christ, strengthen you in our goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, give you <laughs> eternal life.
we continue with the uh, Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right and the good and the joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and angels and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when you had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched up his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. And gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is God. Christ is God. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption of Father in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and accession, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and the blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and an ending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constance, and peace. And the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Lord. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Now, all are welcome to the table. Uh, if you prefer not to get bread, if you, you just cross your hands like this, and then we'll offer a prayer for you. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Christ, the bread of heaven. Out of 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 
could have crashed the little heaven. 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 Together, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of the Son and Savior Jesus Christ. You have filled us with the spiritual food and the suffering of his body. Send us And all the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and mind in the knowledge and love of God and the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.
Let us go forth in peace to love and save the Lord.